All right, we're talking about uh, scripts for Versi. He's been uh, working um, with distressed properties, you know, basically walking neighborhoods, taking a look at, at properties that look like they've been run down, maybe folks that, that have given up, maybe vacant properties. And he's uh, designing a, a follow-up system to, uh, to get after it with these folks. And so we're talking about <clears throat> kind of opening up those conversations, knowing it's a surprise attack. You may have somebody um, who's, Certainly not expecting the phone call, but uh, maybe in a in a position where you know they're kind of putting their head in the sand. They don't really want to talk to anybody. So uh, we're figuring out ways to get through the uh, the initial objection of that, which is very similar to to any phone call. But uh, we want to make sure that we're offering a few direct solutions so that they feel that there's more than one option, and you have more than one option on where you can take the conversation. So the suggestion would be, um, if you're going to to open up with, I've got a buyer who's looking to purchase in this area. It's a cash investor, and they can close quick. Uh, you know those types of things. That's great. I think adding, and this is where we're picking up, adding that you have several buyers who are looking in the area, and uh, and maybe highlighting some of the key characteristics of those buyers. And the idea would be when highlighting those characteristics is you want to carve out a couple of different paths that you could take the conversation. If you're calling me out of the blue um, and, and your first pitch is fast and easy, I may light up, but I also may shut down thinking, here's somebody trying to, to, to get a deal, That's cut right. into my equity, not pay me what my house is worth type of deal, right? So if you can open it up with a few other yeah, I've got several buyers that have been working in the area. I've got a couple of first-time home buyers who've been really beat up in the market. You know, it's pretty competitive out there, and, and sellers are, are really getting great prices for their homes. Um, and they're just looking for some off-market opportunities. They love this area. And then you can kind of go into the questions there. But then you backdoor them with, I've got another set of clients who are cash investors that are looking for properties that they can fix and flip. And those are great options too, because it's fast, it's easy, it's a great price, and you get a lot of flexibility in terms of you know what you want to do and what works for you. Okay. Now you've got two extremes there. So if they're yes. money motivated, yes. you've got a solution. <laughs> if they're time and fast and easy button motivated, you got a solution for them too. Okay. Okay. And I don't know if you want to add too much more to it. No. But I think if you've got the bookend extremes, yes. if they've got questions that align somewhere in the middle, you can go there. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we got several clients. A few of them are first-time buyers who've had trouble, you know, finding a home in, in this market. You know, um, homeowners are getting a top dollar. Yep. You know, and I also have some clients who are um, uh, investors who are looking to pay cash and uh, flip some homes. So they have a, a lot more flexibility and um, um, what, was, what was the other? Uh, a lot more flexibility that they can provide to you okay. to make sure that whatever solution we come up with is a win-win. So, and that could mean um, an as-is sale. Mm -hmm not making any repairs, not investing any more money into the property. That could mean um, giving them some time on the back end of the transaction to get all of their stuff and move out. You know, that could be really one of the biggest pain points for somebody, especially if you're calling them out of the blue, is mm -hmm. where the hell am I going to go? Yes. And how much time do I have to get to some questionable place? Okay. Right. Okay. All right, so so I could pretty much state that you know um, they have a lot more flexibility that they can provide to you, so it can be a win-win sale. And you know some examples of that flexibility would be you know if, if a client needed more time uh, to stay in the property to find a place to to go if they didn't have somewhere to go. Um, and what was the other one? Um, kind of an as-is sale, right? So yeah, yeah. you know these cash investors, they've seen everything under the moon from properties that have been burned to the ground that they've had to rebuild to properties that are in really great condition that just need a little lipstick, you know, just a little extra love. So they've seen that and everything in between. So they're not afraid 
of any type of property condition. They're not going to ask anybody to make any repairs, invest any money, you know, do inspect. It's as easy as it gets. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. Okay, and then from there, you've got alternative, you know, angles where, you know, you're talking about, you know, do you know anybody in the area? Right, or, right. Right. Then uh, none of that interests them. Do you know anybody in the area? Um, uh, right. Have you heard of any of your neighbors looking to make a move? Um, and uh, if if not, then, you know, I will go into asking them, do you mind if I share with you my contact information so I can, you know, update you on uh, what's going on in your neighborhood as um, as things start to evolve? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think you have some opportunities there to to plant some seeds. You know, when you're talking about those first time homeowners, like you said, they're getting beat up in the market. As you know, it's a very competitive market. Home sellers are doing very well with with prices. You plant those seeds. You could always come back to it, too. Hey, would you mind if I follow up with you as the market evolves? Like we said, the market seems to be going up and God, if these rates start to tick back down, God knows where these prices are going to go. Would you like me to update you as things start to move in a positive direction? You know, yeah. those types of things. So yeah. you plant those seeds and you come back to it to, to get permission to follow up. There you go. Um, and I think you got to be careful and, and you're doing a great job of, you know, it's more of a blanket. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm calling neighbors homeowners in this area because I've got clients looking to buy as right. opposed to, you know, the real reason you're calling is because their house looked pretty beat up. Right. You're right. hoping they're giving up. Right. They need some help and you right. can offer some solutions, but you got to be careful with that because you don't want to, you know, Hey, well, why are you calling me? Well, your house looked like shit. <laughs> right. Right. So I think you've got the right approach there. Think of other things that you can do to add value. I know you want to go quick and direct. And if we're lucky, you get that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it still may take you yeah. a little while to build yeah. some trust and get people where they put their, get their guard down. They say, all right, I'm going to give Versi a call here. Think about other ways that you can provide value to these folks along the way. You okay. know that their yards look pretty run down. Maybe getting a vendor list together in partnering with a vendor, a landscaper, a gardener, somebody that can do something, uh, you know, uh, maybe even at a discount to help folks out in your sphere, mm -hmm. you know, might be cool. Think of things that you can do to add value. Okay. 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 That's a good you idea. Nick, Nick does a good job of, uh, I don't know if he's ever shared this with you. He, he'll run out to, to different neighborhoods and pull the trash cans in. <laughs> really? <laughs> On garbage day. Mm. Yeah, just walking the neighbor neighborhood, pulling in trash cans, knocking on some doors, having some fun. And oh. he'll get text messages. Granted, he probably did this in areas where he lived, so the neighbors actually knew him. Yeah, yeah. But he'll get random text messages. Hey, Nick, how are you running around, man? Thanks for pulling in the cans. Okay. Little things, but yeah. put put some thought to to what you can do. And I know we talked yesterday about. You know, understanding that foreclosure process, understanding yeah. what your options are. Yeah, that's another piece. Yep, you know, and that's going to be added in at one point, right? You got to get some some base layers laid mm -hmm. first, but I think that's a subsequent step that you can take. Familiarize yourself with that process. Understand what you can provide as far as solutions on the finance side, right? Because you're a Swiss Army knife now, right? Right. You right. More than one solution. I don't have to sell your house to help you. Right. I can I can point you in the direction of counseling. I can help you out with HUD. I can get you bailout loans with, you know, with private investors that can bring your loan back up to current. We could put you on a plan that saves the house. Those are all things that, that you have at your disposal. So familiarize yourself with that. Okay. And then that way, you know, as questions start to pop up, yes, you have, you know, at least some 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 places you can go. Okay. To book that next meeting. Gotcha. gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. I got a lot of good pieces and I'll, uh, I'll get the recording on this. Okay. And just map it all, all the way out. And then just have my bullet points where, um, I know I need to hit and then practice on that. You know, go, yeah. go over that, go over that, rehearse that, rehearse it, rehearse it, and then, uh, continue to do it. Cause like I said, I'm going to go back out today and give me at least 20, 20 more, um, properties. Mm -hmm. and um, then I'll start calling them the following day. 
you know, perfect the following day. And I'll just keep this process up, you know, where I'm going out once a week, you know, yeah. adding one, adding to, adding to. The and after, day. after three months, you have 300 properties. Yeah. You know, and it's a slow burn, but it you know, once it starts to hit, man, if you can grab, you know, one or two of these things a quarter, Absolutely. You know, it, it all helps. Absolutely. Yeah. And, that, and that's the whole thing. You know, you gotta, you gotta go and get after it. You gotta go find it because, um, waiting is just not not a not hope a, is not a strategy it's not a strategy it's not no. a strategy. so no. activity action if i'm doing my part then i know that i know that god's going to do his part you know yep. it's already done i got to do my part and my part is to do the work that's it so i do the work so the results are not on me so so good good deal